while 90 plus percent of boards and senior executives, including CIOs, uh, have uh, said that um, technology is mission critical to their organisations. Less than 20% of boards worldwide have got the competencies to govern technology. In other words, they haven't got people with the background that perhaps some of the CIOs have got. And so there is an enormous gap. There's three particular areas that CIOs can work on. The first is if they are buried two or three layers down in the organisation's structure, not only are the reports that they're putting forward uh, to go into the board reports going to be filtered by, for example, the Chief Financial Officer. They're also filtered by the Chief Executive Officer. So you've got two filters before the CIO's uh, information actually makes it up to the board. So that reporting relationship uh, can be fundamentally broken and that increases risk on a range of fronts, not only for the CIO, uh, but also for the organisation. The second thing is that if at all possible, they need to take this leadership role. It doesn't mean that you have to be the chief executive or that you need to be on the board of directors. Sometimes it just needs the CIO to stand up and be counted. The third thing though is, is educate yourself. If you haven't gone out and you're in a senior role and studied business, I would strongly suggest you do. And at a very practical level, just build those relationships. Governance in part is about relational mechanisms. In other words, the relationships that you build with your colleagues in order to understand their business. You need to understand the language that your chief executive and the board of directors speak, and you need to be relevant to them. So if you're talking about you know, CRMs and ERPs and SAPs and, uh, and all of the many acronyms that we use in the IT industry, you're already creating another barrier to your own effectiveness. Yeah.